is going to be fun. It's going to be wooden roller coasters and beautiful hand-carved carousels. It's going to be vintage mechanical contraptions and a bunch of rides they don't make anymore. It's going to be a lot of the reasons why you come to an old amusement park. People like thrills, they like excitement. You also come for escapism, and that's what rides provide. You get that old feeling that I can't get in any of them rides. Even though you know it's safe, it could just break at any moment. I get... We're going to celebrate some traditional amusement parks. Smaller than most theme parks, older than Disneyland. We're going to whip around the country, stopping at places like Playland in Rye, New York, and the Oaks in Portland, Oregon. From Lake Winnipesoka in Georgia, to Lake Compounds in Connecticut, to Lakeside in Colorado. We're going to ride rides, talk to people, and hop on any wooden coaster, no matter how rough. It's just you and gravity and wheels and wood. And <laughs> it's a roller coaster. What do you want? You're going to pay $4 for something that's going to tickle you? On a hot summer day, there may be no better place on Earth than in one of these great old amusement parks. If you don't like those big, big, big parks, come here. <laughs> You know, in 1919, there were almost 2,000 amusement parks in America. Today, there were only about 600. Many of the parks that are gone are fondly remembered, but we're not going to dwell on them. We're going to places that have developed the kind of amazing charm that comes only with careful aging. We're going to start in a beautiful old park filled with trees, a park called Idlewild in Ligonier, Pennsylvania. A lot of amusement parks are very high energy types of parks, uh, packing the midway with rides and games and attractions. Here, you kind of walk down in here and kind of go, ah. Yeah. Jim Futrell and his family often come out here to Idlewild to enjoy the ah, and the family friendly rides like the old miniature train. Jim is a historian with the National Amusement Park Historical Association, and he knows that Idlewild actually began as a railroad park which means it was established by a real full-sized railroad company. Such companies attracted more riders to their service by providing an amusing nearby destination. Well, Idlewild was uh, opened in 1878. It's the third oldest operating amusement park in the United States. Of course, there was a merry-go-round, first a steam-driven one. Then in the early 1930s, this still trusty carousel from the Philadelphia Toboggan Company arrived. Philadelphia Toboggan Company folks have built many rides over the years. And in the winter of 1937, they were here again to design a roller coaster for all ages, dubbed the Rollo Coaster. So they uh, found the hillside as, a, I guess, a way to save uh, construction costs and really built a unique ride called an out and back ride where you go out to one point and come back. The roller coaster is pretty tame. The biggest plunge is only 27 feet, but the track is surrounded by trees, and the swoop turn at the far end may surprise folks who consider this nothing more than a kiddie coaster. Idlewild also has some great old rides that you don't find everywhere. Caterpillar is um, one of the classic rides they have here. Uh, it was a pretty common ride from the 20s until the 50s. And it just goes round and round, but an old canvas canopy comes over and the ride changes. Light leaks through, wind rushes past you, you become a wiggly worm. Then after a few moments of metamorphosis, you're a human being again. Say goodbye, neighbors. If you're in the mood for make-believe, you may want to check out a unique attraction here, a trolley ride through Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, complete with full-size versions of all his familiar TV puppets. I, King Friday the 13th, welcome you to this neighborhood. Mr. Rogers, who came to this park as a boy, helped design this ride in the late 1980s. It fits in well with Idlewild's other older kiddie rides, too. With the post-war baby boom, a lot of, of kiddie attractions opened around the country. And then there were also a lot of storybook parks that opened. Uh, there's very few of them left now. Uh, storybook Forest probably being the best preserved of them all. Storybook Forest is another unusual part of Idlewild. It's a walk-through part of the park with no rides, just woods filled with characters and sights from nursery rhymes and fairy tales. 
Our guide was Ed Ostrowski, who's been an artist and a painter here for more than 20 years. And this is Grandma's house where Red Riding Hood came to visit. You can also stop by Snow White's, visit Humpty Dumpty, and walk through the crooked little house of the crooked little man. And from what I understand, the old carpenters that worked on it said that they never had to use a level or take a measurement. They just did it, made it up as they went along. People get a kick out of bringing kids to a place that's pretty much the same as it was when it opened in 1954. People always say it's much smaller than I remember. And I think that's what surprised them, especially the keyhole that they walk through over here. You see a lot of adults try to squeeze through, but they just don't fit anymore. We had a real commitment to keeping it the same. Uh, we never skimped on it, we never cut back. We've always wanted it to look just as it did from that opening season. The trick is to preserve some old stuff for some folks and add new stuff for others. People come to parks for lots of different reasons. Ooh, my school had a field trip for whoever was good and didn't get suspended, they got to come. <laughs> we came with our church. You never got suspended? Not this year. We just got out of school. Yesterday, Yesterday was our last day. And it's, it's a good place to be if you are well equipped, like us three young ladies. I'm just coming here chilling, letting these people know where I'm coming from. Yeah. Like, get your hands from us. We like making spectacles of ourselves. <laughs> well, all those kids were spending the day at Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio. This park traces its history as a beach resort back to 1870. So it has a claim on being the second oldest park in America. We like to think uh, we're an amusement park whose uh, theme is thrill rides. And they've got lots of thrill rides here. John Hildebrandt, who's a Cedar Point vice president, says the park is unusual for its 13 coasters, its huge size, and its odd location on a peninsula that juts into Lake Erie. I think we're, we're the only old-time park that made the transition into big-time super park. An amusement park, especially traditional amusement parks, there's no long-term plan for them. They just grew. Tim O'Brien, an editor for Amusement Business Magazine, has written about the differences between carefully designed theme parks and somewhat random older places. You've got a roller coaster here, you've got a merry-go-round here, you might go to a restaurant right there. They put things where they've got room. And that's essentially what they've done here at Cedar Point. Their space is limited, but they've found room for an ever-increasing number of rides, especially all sorts of coasters. Roller coasters are what it is all about. Roller coasters are the heartbeat of any amusement park. Oh, the roller coasters, a lot of people like to get scared and have a good time. Because it's fun! And it's scary. Well, like the hills. They're intense. They yeah. make us scream. It's kind of like, kind of like cheating death like you. Man, hair blowing in the wind. <laughs> Every time you ride a steel roller coaster, you basically get the same ride. Steel coaster is a lot smoother. You get a lot more G-forces out of it, I think. The monster is the best ride I've seen in point. Magnum. Magnum. The Magnum. Magnum. It's a great, great ride. It's big, it's tall, it's, it's fast. Scary. Huge drive. <laughs> that ride right there. It's the best ride here. Excuse me, this is our show. <laughs> <laughs> On a wood coaster, the wood kind of you shaking around like this. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on the time of day. Main, main streak is fun. Depending on whether the sun's out. Like the headbanger roller coaster. That's what that is. You know, you get this living and breathing aspect of the wood. There's a lot of hills, and there's just one part when when you go look at me with my arms around all these girls. 